Welcome to Excel Business Statistical Analysis video number 29. And in this video, we get to look at the amazing hyper geometric distribution function for experiments where the probability of success does not remain the same each time, but instead each time it changes as a conditional probability. Now back in video number 19, we looked at a playing card example. And we asked the question, calculate the probability that you can pull two straight queens from a deck of cards without replacement. That just means when you pull one card, you don't put it back into the deck before you pull the second card, which means on the second attempt, the sample space has changed. And now we have a conditional probability. Now we're going to make the calculation just as we did back in video number 19. And then we'll see how to use this new function, hypergeometric distribution. Now here are the four variables we're going to need to make this calculation. We have to know the population size. And when we get to the hypergeometric distribution function, that'll be called number in the population. Well, we have 52 cards, so that's 52. We also need to know the number of successes in the population. That will be known in the function as population underscore s for population successes. And we can see there are four queens, so that's a four. n is the fixed number of trials, or the sample size, or the number of cards pulled. The name of the argument in the function is number underscore sample. So we're only going to pull two cards, so the number of trials is two. x, that's going to be a random discrete variable that counts the number of successes in the sample. For us, it's number of queen cards selected in the sample. In the function, that will be known as sample underscore s for sample successes. Well, we want two. Now our goal is to calculate the probability of pulling two straight queens from a deck of cards without replacement. Because we're not putting the cards back in, this means that the sample space will change and the events are not independent. That means we'll have to use conditional probability. And the probability of success is not the same for each trial. And that means this is different than a binomial experiment where the probability stays the same for each trial. Now anytime we're calculating a probability longhand, we need to know how many sample points there are. That means we need to take the combination where number is the number in the sample or the number of trials. That's 2, comma, number chosen. That's the number of successes throughout the fixed number of trials. So that's a 2. Now when I close parentheses and Enter, we only get one sample point. And that'll allow us to just type out the probability formula in a single cell. Now for our probability, it's really an and logical test. Because we want to say, hey, what's the probability of getting that second queen and that first queen? And when there's conditional probabilities, you take probability of queen number one times the conditional probability, which is probability of getting queen two given that we've already pulled queen one. That's where the sample space will change. So the denominator in the second probability will be different than the first. Now we're just going to hard code the numbers in to see how this AND logical test probability works. Now the first probability, well, how many queens are there? Four. Divide by, what's the total number of cards? 52 times, now the sample space has changed. So in the numerator, there are three, but I'm going to write it as 4 minus 1 to explicitly show that the sample space has changed. Then we're going to divide it by, in parentheses, 52 minus 1, which is really 51. And so for this event, pulling two queens in succession, wow, that's less than 1%. That's like 4 tenths of 1%, so a very small probability. Now we could also do the formula this way, linking back to our formula inputs. When I hit Enter, I get the same thing. But I wanted to make sure and do it this way so we could visually see what's going on. 
Now when we use the hypergeometric distribution function, it'll do all this math for us. So equals, and there are two options, right? The one with a dot dist, that's the more modern statistical function that came in actually 12 years ago, so we can't really call it modern. This is the one that we used before 2010. Now the strange thing is both functions are kept in Excel, and they both calculate this exactly the same way. But I'm going to use the dot convention one. All right, here we go, the arguments. We need to know the sample successes. That means how many queens are we going to pull in succession. So 2, comma, number in the sample. That's how many cards we're pulling, number of trials. So 2, comma, population successes. Well, there are four total queens in the population, comma, number in the population. That means the total count for the population, which is 52. Now we comma. And here's that cumulative argument again. We get to choose between false and true. If we put false or 0, it uses what's called the probability mass function, which just calculates exactly the x value we give it, which our x is 2 queens. If we were to use true, then just as in the last video, it would go from whatever the lowest x is up to the x value we give it. Now I'm going to type in a 0 because I want exactly 2. And guess what? When I hit Enter, I get exactly the same thing. Now for this example, since there's just one sample point, it doesn't really illustrate the power of this function. But if we scroll down and ask a different question, and by the way, here are some notes about the hypergeometric distribution function. Down here, example two, here's our different question. What if we want to calculate the probability that you can pull two face cards in five tries from a deck of cards without replacement? Well, here with this example, we're not going to have one sample point. So the formula would be much harder. Now, the population size is still 52, but our definition of a success is pull a face card. Now, not including the aces, there are 12 face cards. So we'll put 12. That's population successes. Number in the sample, number of fixed trials, there are five. And all we want is two face cards. Now, when we calculate the number of sample points using our combine function, there are 10 sample points. So here, I would not want to have to calculate all of these. Each one of these represents one of the possible sample points when you're only pulling two face cards in five tries. There's face face and then no face. That's only the first sample point. Here's face face, and the no face goes in those positions. We continue that 10 times. Then we could come up here, Alt equals. It guessed wrong, but I redirect it. Using the definition of the probability of an event, add up all the probabilities of the sample points for that event. And when I hit Enter, we get about a 25% chance that we can get two face cards in five tries. Now, it's just flat out going to be much easier with our awesome hypergeometric distribution function. Sample successes, we only want to pull two face cards. Comma, number in the sample fixed trials, well, we're going to get five cards. Comma, population successes, there's 12 face cards, population 52. And we want false or zero because we're calculating exactly x equals 2. So when I hit Enter, that is much easier. Now for this experiment where we let the random discrete variable represent any one of the six possibilities, well, let's scroll down here. We can just go ahead and list all the probabilities because when we're pulling five cards and we're talking about pulling face cards, well, we could get 0 to 5. So we use hypergeometric distribution and sample successes. That's our discrete random variable. I'm just going to put them all in. When I put them all in, the function will spill the probability for each x, comma, the size of the sample, 5. Population success is 12. Pop is 52. And comma, we want 0 for exactly that x probability. When I hit Enter, there's all the probabilities. 
as you can see, getting five face cards in five tries. Very, very teeny. Even four, very teeny. Three, about 6%. Now let's check to see if this is a valid distribution. Alt equals and Enter. And sure enough, we get one. Now we can also ask cumulative questions. If I want to calculate the probability of getting zero face cards, or one face card, or two face cards in five tries, that's really the same as saying, hey, what's the probability of getting two or fewer face cards? Alt equals, well, I have my distribution. So I simply highlight the probabilities for x 0 to 2 and Enter. If I don't have that probability distribution, I can just jump straight to our function. We're interested in the upper x of 2, comma, number in the sample 5. Population success is 12, pop 52, comma, and we do not use 0 here. I want to go from whatever the lowest x is up to the x that I give it. So I put a true or 1. That'll do cumulative, and when I hit Enter, 92%. Now let's scroll down and look at our last example. Now we want to go back to 2008 and talk about the financial crisis. During the financial crisis of 2008, it actually went 2008 to about 2010. And that's the crisis when Wall Street and the banks and insurance companies in the world blew up the banking system. But at that time, of the 10 biggest banks, only three increased lending after they were given TARP funds of about $2 billion. Now, those TARP funds came from the US government, and the government gave those banks that blew up the system $2 billion? Well, the government was hoping that that infusion of money would cause the bank to increase lending, which in turn would help spur the economy, create jobs, and get out of the recession. So our probability question is, if you took a random sample of four of the 10 biggest banks at the time, what is the probability that one of them would have increased lending? Or how about three of them? Now, the experiment is asking four banks out of 10 without replacement. That means when we ask one bank, we don't put them back into the pile and risk asking them again. And we're going to ask them if they increased lending. That means a success is the bank increased lending. And our discrete random variable out of four tries will be the number of banks that increased lending. Now, our experiment variables are population size 10. The successes are the three banks that actually increased lending. We're going to ask four of them, so that's the sample size. And we have two x's. We want to see if one out of four increased lending, and then three out of four. Now for the first x, 1, let's calculate how many sample points there are. There are four tries and one success. So there are four. I have listed them here. Since it's just one, there's a lend and then three no lends. And then that one lend gets moved around. If we did it manually, that's the first time, 3 out of 10. But then each success of conditional probability, the sample space changes. And notice in the numerator here, that's not lend. So there's 9 left total and 2 which actually lent. So we make each one of these conditional probability calculations, multiply. There's all the sample points. If we come up in Alt equals, well, we add all these up. And when I hit Enter, the probability that one of the four banks that we ask actually increased lending is 50%. You also could do it longhand, since these will all be the same. Do one of the sample points and multiply the number of sample points. But of course, we want to use the hypergeometric distribution function. So our first x value, number of successes in the sample, 1, comma, their sample size, population successes, population size, comma, 0 for exactly 50%. If we do the same thing but use 3, 3 of 4 with 3 successes in the population, there's the population and a 0, so about 3%. We could also just list all the probabilities. But the interesting thing here 
is we already know what the answer for 4 is. Because if there's only 3 in the population, if we ask 4, we're never going to get all 4 increasing lending. We'll use our function, all of the successes, all of the x's, sample size, number of successes in the population, population size. And we're still doing 0 because we want a probability for each x. And when I hit Enter, there's our 50% for 1, there's our 3% for 3, and sure enough, there's our 0 for 4. Alt equals, just to check, and sure enough, it equals 1. All right, in this video, we talked about the hyper geometric distribution, and we talked about having a number of trials, but having the probability change each time, which means we have conditional probabilities. We went ahead and did it the old school method, the longhand method. We know that if we have the probabilities for all the sample points, we can just add. We can calculate one sample point probability and multiply by 4. Or better yet, we can use the hyper geometric distribution function. In most of our examples, we use cumulative 0 to get the probability of exactly x. But in one of our card examples, here we wanted the number of face cards out of five tries that are less than or equal to two. So we went ahead and either summed or used hypergeometric distribution function with cumulative one or true, which always goes from the lowest x up to the x we give it. Now this is the last video for chapter five. Next chapter, chapter six, we're going to get to talk about a continuous random variable and we'll have our first introduction to the normal bell-shaped curve. All right, we'll see you next video.